So it's official. There has finally been a trade during the 2020 NBA trade deadline and it's a four-team trade so it's pretty big. And of course when it's a four-team trade that means there are many parties involved and many players. So this is the trade. The full trade details include the Hawks receiving Clint Capella and Nene, the Rockets receiving Robert Covington, Jordan Bell and a second round pick, the Timberwolves receiving Malik Beasley, Jarrett Vanderbilt, Hernan Gomez, Evan Turner and draft picks, and the Denver Nuggets receive Jordan Bell, Shabazz Napier and a first round pick from Atlanta, which is the Brooklyn Nets first round pick. It is a huge trade, there are so many things involved in this trade, but at the end of the day, the Houston Rockets do not receive a center, and they're giving up one of their biggest pieces in Clint Capella, who is a center. Now I know that people in the comment section will say something about Jordan Bell, but Jordan Bell, number one, isn't a center, he's a power forward, and number two, he's not the starting center for the Houston Rockets. I believe that this is going to be interesting to see what Houston does if they may make another move to get a starting center. Because honestly, I don't know how Tyson Chandler and Jordan Bell can be your starting centers if you're a team looking to do well in this year's NBA playoffs. It's going to be tough having those two as your starting centers. Tyson Chandler literally averages 1.4 points and 2.6 rebounds in 8.8 .8 minutes per game. So he barely plays. And Jordan Bell has never averaged over 5 points in any season. And currently he averages 3 points and 3 rebounds in 8 minutes per game as well. Neither player is a starting center, and they're barely bench players on a team. So firstly, I want to know your winners and losers of this trade in the comment section down below. It's a pretty crazy trade. It's like a 15-person trade, which hasn't happened, I don't think, in the NBA. So let me know down below what you think about the trade. If you enjoy these videos, I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could smash that like button for me. It would be amazing if we could reach 1,000 likes for the next video. Subscribe if you're new for NBA content every single week, and hit that notification button so you never miss an upload. It takes one second of your time, and I would greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's get on to the video. So firstly, the Houston Rockets, because they're the main team, I believe, in this situation. They're trading their starting center. Clint Capella has been a pretty decent player for the Houston Rockets over the last couple of years. Yes, of course, he's having a down year from his past year. Last year, he was a 16-point-per-game player, a guy who could get you 13 rebounds, 1.5 blocks per game, shooting 64% from the field. And he even shot 63% from the free throw line, which was much better than what he'd previously been shooting. This year, though, he's averaging 14 points with 14 rebounds, two blocks per game, shooting 52% from the free throw line in 32 minutes per game. So overall, Clint Capella was a solid player. He wasn't Russell Westbrook or James Harden, but he was a solid player for the Houston Rockets, a guy that would be able to grab boards, play defense, and score when needed. I don't think that the Houston Rockets are done though. I think they're going to make another move during this year's NBA trade deadline. I would have thought that Eric Gordon would be the perfect player that the Houston Rockets can trade away for a big man considering they have a lot of wing players such as Ben McLemore, Daniel House, Austin Rivers, Eric Gordon. Now they have Robert Covington and of course they have James Harden but obviously they cannot trade away Eric Gordon considering he signed an extension this summer which means he's unable to be traded for the six months and it hasn't passed six months since he signed his extension. So one thing I think Think the Houston Rockets could do is possibly go and get Kenneth Fareed again like they did last year in free agency considering that Kenneth Fareed actually played pretty decent for them whilst they didn't have Clint Capella last season. I don't think the Houston Rockets are done with trades. I think they could potentially make another trade during this year's NBA trade deadline to get another center. I don't know who they're going to trade away but I do think a player that they could get could be somebody like Tristan Thompson. The Cavaliers won't ask for a lot and also he isn't too dissimilar from Clint Capella in the way that he plays defense, rebounds and doesn't really need to be a top option on a team. Plus he's had championship success and knows what it takes to win on the biggest stage. I would probably rather Clint Capella, but now that you have Robert Covington, it would make sense. Then you have a lineup of Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Robert Covington, PJ Tucker and Tristan Thompson, which I believe is a better lineup than what they currently had. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Rockets make another move, but currently if they don't and they stick with their very small lineup, that's where it's going to be challenging for the Houston Rockets in my opinion. They need somebody because heading into the playoffs, if they make it to the playoffs, which you'd assume that the Houston Rockets will make it into the playoffs, they're going to struggle against some pretty big and lengthy teams. All teams in the Western Conference have a very solid big man. The Lakers obviously have a really good big man in Anthony Davis, and they're definitely a big team with Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, and obviously they have the potential to get DeMarcus Cousins back. The Clippers have Montrez Harrell. The Nuggets have Jokic. The Jazz have Rudy Gobert. The Mavericks have Kristaps Porzingis. The Thunder have Steven Adams. And if the Blazers or the 
Spurs make it, they've got Nurkic and Whiteside, and the Spurs have LaMarcus Aldridge. So I believe that the Houston Rockets will struggle if they make it to the playoffs, simply because obviously Mike D'Antoni, I know he loves to run the small ball, but I don't know how you can match up against the Lakers or the Nuggets or the Jazz with somebody who's so lengthy and so big. Davis, Gobert, Jokic. I just believe it's going to be tough if they don't go after another center. Because even if they do want to run the small ball, like let's say the Los Angeles Clippers, the Clippers have Pat Bev, Lou Will, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. That is a small team, but at least they have Montrez Harrell to back it up. The Houston Rockets currently could run a very similar lineup, but then at the center position, they don't have anybody like Harrell. So they need to get somebody like that in my opinion. As for what Houston actually got, they got Robert Covington, who I think is a very solid player for this team. He is like a Trevor Ariza type player when he played for the Houston Rockets, and I think it's a great fit. Alongside Russell Westbrook, alongside James Harden, PJ Tucker, and whoever else they piece around him, Robert Covington is a great 3 and D guy. You know what he's going to bring each and every night. He locks down defensively, but he can also hit the open three, which is exactly what the Houston Rockets need. As for Atlanta, that's the team that got Clint Capella. I really like this. I think Atlanta really needed a guy like Clint Capella. They didn't want to run John Collins at center. John Collins didn't want to run at center. And I think Trey Young, John Collins, and Clint Capella, it's a pretty nice trio to go into the future with. Obviously, it's not a winning NBA championship trio. But for a team just looking to make a playoff push with young pieces on that team, Clint Capella is not any harm to this team. He'll play his role each and every night. You know what he brings defensively. We've already talked about him and I think just alongside Trey Young who's emerging as one of the best point guards in the league John Collins who could be a future all-star in this league I really like it the Atlanta Hawks were in need of a center because they're one of the worst rebounding teams in the league and they definitely lacked a defensive presence and Clint Capella is the perfect guy they were going after Andre Drummond Steven Adams and a whole bunch of other players Clint Capella plays that role and now they could actually make a playoff push if they could string a few games together because they're really not too far behind they are currently the worst team in the Eastern Conference conference at 13 wins but that is only halfway through this season and the Orlando Magic are currently the 8th seed at 22 wins so they're really not too far behind only nine games out of the seventh and eighth seed they could potentially make the playoffs but even if they don't they're going to come back next season with an even better Cam Reddish and even better DeAndre Hunter and they've still got an improved Trey Young, John Collins and now Clint Capella it's going to be fun to watch the Atlanta Hawks in the future. As for the Denver Nuggets, they got rid of Malik Beasley and Hernan Gomez, which I believe was a pretty big part of what the Denver Nuggets were about. Malik Beasley, in my opinion, is a very good player. I feel like he will be missed, but at the same time, he wasn't being utilized in Denver. He was playing 18 minutes per game, and with the emergence of Michael Porter Jr., you can see that he will probably not have a role in this Denver Nuggets team. He only averages 7.8 points on 39% and 36% from three. Last season though, he averaged 11 points and he did show a little bit more, but this year at 23 years of age, he just couldn't find his role on the Denver Nuggets with what they're building this season. He's gonna be a great fit in Minnesota, I reckon. I believe he'll have an emerging year in Minnesota. He'll be able to play there for a few years, see how they fit around with Wiggins and Towns, and he could be somebody that could be utilized in Minnesota far more than he is used in Denver. As for Hernan Gomez, I really like what he brought a big man that can hit the three he isn't a big piece but I thought he was a guy that the Denver Nuggets could utilize but I guess not they're going with Gerald Green and Gerald Green is somebody that has come off the bench in the past he's like a J.R. Smith type player where if he comes off the bench you know what he brings he has crazy athleticism can hit the three he's a solid wing defender just because of how athletic he is and how quick he moves I believe that Gerald Green will fit a lot better in the Denver Nuggets roster and he's a guy that can do multiple things on the court and give the Denver Nuggets a spark off the bench which they need alongside Michael Porter Jr. But as for Minnesota, a team that was going after D'Angelo Russell, now they have Malik Beasley, Hernan Gomez, Evan Turner, and Atlanta's first round pick. I believe that's actually really good. I think that they can use these as assets for the future, or they can keep them, because the thing about Towns is he wants to win. The Minnesota Timberwolves were obviously looking to make a trade during this trade deadline. Towns was obviously like, yeah, get me some help. We can't win a game. They wanted to get two first round picks in return for Covington, but I think that Malik Beasley, Hernan Gomez, and a first round pick could be utilized more for trade assets in the future. Because when you think about it, now that Robert Covington is off the team, the Golden State Warriors will most likely not make a trade with Minnesota right now, and they probably will wait till the end of the season to trade D'Angelo Russell, and that could happen during the draft. Considering that Minnesota now has a first round pick via the Nets, they do have Malik Beasley and Hernan Gomez who could be used as trade assets, and they could be solid bench depth for the Golden State Warriors. Then the Minnesota Timberwolves throw in a guy like Andrew Wiggins, 
It's a lot of assets that they could use to get a guy like D'Angelo Russell and pair Cat with Russell. Obviously, the Minnesota Timberwolves may have to throw in a future first round pick or two, but that is a lot that I think the Golden State Warriors would consider rather than just Covington or Andrew Wiggins by themselves. So, it's a pretty big four-team trade. I want to know down below what you think about it. I really want to know your winners and losers of this trade. What do you think? I believe it's a pretty big loss for the Houston Rockets. It's going to be interesting to see who they can get to replace Clint Capella. I don't believe they won at all, but I do believe Atlanta won this trade. They're going to have a nice young trio of John Collins, Trey Young, and Clint Capella. And in the end, it's going to be interesting to see what happens after this trade deadline ends and which teams win and which teams lose. So with that said, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new if you enjoy NBA content every single week. Hit that notification button so you never miss an upload. It's been your Smith. I am out. Peace.